Hello, my dear doctors. I'd like to discuss a topic that is a acoustic neuroma. Acoustic neuroma is more correctly called the vestibular schwannomas, so circle vestibular schwannomas accounts for approximately 5% of the intracranial tumors and 90% of the cerebellopontine angle tumor, that is CPA, right? Cerebellopontine angle tumor. So, features can be predicted by the affected cranial nerves. What is that? That is cranial nerve, that is 8 cranial nerve hearing loss, vertigo, and tinnitus. Cranial nerve 5, absent corneal reflex and cranial nerve 7, the facial palsy. And bilateral acoustic neuroma are seen in neurofibromatosis type 2. Yes, bilateral schwannoma is a diagnosis of neurofibromatosis NF type 2. Already we discussed in neurofibromatosis video clips. MRI of the cerebellopontal angle is the investigation of choice. Yes, my dear, I would like to give a box or this box will be really helpful. So, what is that? Yes, that is the acoustic neuroma. So, we are writing the acoustic neuroma. Yes. If you write a single talk for the acoustic neuroma, so what do you need to remember? So, I am writing acoustic neuroma is A for absent, C for corneal reflux. That's it. Make a box. This is a pathognomonic feature. So, in your scenarios, if you are getting right, the corneal reflux is absent. So, think about this is acoustic neuroma. So, we can remember whenever the word will come up, A for absent and C for corneal reflux, that will be helpful. Acoustic neuroma is nothing but CP angle tumor. So, I am saying cerebellopontine angle tumor, so angle. So, once again CPA for angle tumor. So, that is important. Cerebellopontal angle tumor. Cerebellopontal angle tumor, yes, the most common tumor is the acoustic neuroma. Another name of the acoustic neuroma is the vestibular, vestibular schwannoma. Yes. So, because of CP angle, cerebellopontine angle tumor, nothing but the acoustic neuroma means the vestibular schwannoma. So, just make a box of the CP angle tumor equal to 578 and this 578 will be helpful. So, this is the cerebellopontine. So, once again, this is the pontine and cerebellum. Pontine angle tumor. So, cerebellum means the ipsilateral cerebellar syndrome, you will get it, plus pontine syndrome. And pontine means in Bengali pi or parts, right, no problem. So, 578. A very important differential diagnosis already we talked, right, we discussed in another chapter, that is anterior inferior cerebellar artery or another name is the lateral pontine syndrome. So, we already learned that lateral pontine syndrome is nothing but 578. So, similar category of the features will be there. Here will be the 578, but here we will get a fetus that already we know, that is we can divide
So, if the right side of entering first seven artery is affected, so definitely all the right sided five, seven, eight will be lost and right five means the right half of the face and opposite half of the body, the crossed features. The crossed features will be present here. In contrast, the CP angle tumor, the cross features will be absent. So, I'd like to discuss a little bit 5, 7, 8 here. 5 means of course, the trisignal nerve, sensory loss, of course, the pain and temperature loss, five. Seven means, of course, the facial muscles, facial muscles will be affected, ipsilateral. Eight means vestibulo cochlear nuclei, so B for vertigo, V for vomiting, so, vomiting, bundle back, vertigo, bundle back and vestibular cochlear nerves of course, there will be the deafness and there will be the tinnitus. So, this is the bundle pack of the 578 bundle pack. But, one of the most important part here, a slide SS box. 5 plus 7 equal to, just write it down, corneal reflex. Five is an efferent fibers and seven is a efferent fibers. Just write it down and that will be helpful. Very focused talk that I am talking about here, this is important. So, very important discussion, you see the differentiating point, already we discussed about the acoustic neuroma. And we know that the unilateral, if it is happened the right side is cerebellar pontine angle tumor, so definitely the cerebellar sign will be the right side and right sided, all the features are right sided. In contrast, in the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, of course, all the features will have the right sided, but the left sided PT of the body and also the limbs, the differentiating points of the lateral pontine syndrome or anterior inferior cerebral artery. I hope that this discussion will be really helpful to this side. Yes. So, the summary talk, a caustic neuroma A for absent, C for corneal reflex. We know a small box that is bilateral. Schwannomas, nothing but neurofibromatosis type 2 and maybe unilateral sometimes can be a part of neurofibromatosis type 2. I would like to discuss another topic, right, a small discussion that is the Rini's and Weber test. Performing both the Rini's and Weber test allows the differentiation of the conductive and the sensory neural hearing loss. Rennie's test tuning fork is placed over the mastoid pulses until the sound is no longer heard, followed by the repositioning just over the external auditory or acoustic meters. ER condition AC is normally better than BC bone conduction. If BC is greater than AC, it is a conductive deafness. Weber test tuning fork is placed on the middle of the forehead equidistant from the patient's ear, the patient is then asked which side is the loudest or louder. In unilateral sensory neural hearing loss, sound is localized to the unaffected side. All right, if you placed it here, so normal side, the patient will listen more than that of abnormal side. So, this is sensory neural hearing loss. Conductive just an opposite. So, make a box and focusing on them, a bit of discussion will be helpful. So, we are discussing, that is the Rini test and Weber test. In a Rini test, normal means AC is greater than BC. 
conductive type of deafness BC is greater than AC. Normal and N and normal N for neurology means nerve deafness also having the AC is greater than BC. Just write it down. In a Weber test, just write it down. Weber means lateralized to normal means sensory neural hearing loss. And lateralized to abnormal here, here that is conductive hearing loss. I like to discuss a little bit, all right. This is very important, my dear. This is very important. Listen very carefully at technical things, all right. You must be very technical, all right. In your exam, the sensory neural hearing loss will come up. So, if you thought that there is a sensory neural, yes. In a sensory neural hearing loss, you see, doing a Rini test will give us nothing. Means AC is greater than BC is normal, N for normal, N for nerve deafness. So, AC is greater than BC means, thought, think about it, this is nerve deafness. Yes. But, in a normal person and nerve deafness, definitely AC and BC both will be reduced, but even then AC is greater than BC means the nerve deafness. And BC is greater than AC means, of course, the conductive deafness. Now, talk about the Weber test. In Weber test, just remember as I talk, right, the sensory neural hearing loss is an exam. So, lateralized to the normal, 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 you see, lateralized to the normal, so the answer is sensory neural hearing loss. So, say with me, lateralized to normal, lateralized to normal, yes, lateralized to normal means sensory neural hearing loss. Means lateralized to the normal ear is the sensory neural hearing loss, that is important. So, normal, 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 N and N, all right? So, I am saying normal and near nerve deafness, AC is greater than BC, and normal is sensor near hearing loss. Same thing. I hope that you understood. Another topic that I would like to discuss, a very small discussion, right? What is that? That is trisiminal neurology, my dear. Trisiminal neurology is the pain syndrome characterized by the severe unilateral pain. A vast majority of the cases are idiopathic, but compression of the trisiminal roots by the tumors or vascular problems may be occur. Like already we discussed about the cranial nerves 5, so this can be happened by the CP angle tumor as well. So that's why I come up with this discussion, right. So trisiminal neurology is a pain syndrome. Once again, the International Headache Society defines the trisiminal neurology huh, is uh, unilateral disorder characterized by brief electric shock like pains, abrupt in onset and termination limited to one or more divisions of the trisiminal nerve. So, unilateral circle, the pain is commonly evoked by the light touch. So, circle the touch including washing, shaving, smoking, talking. So, circle talking and brushing the teeth. So, circle teeth, trigger factors frequently occur spontaneously. Small areas in the nasal level fold in chin may be particularly susceptible to the precipitation of the trigger areas. So, nasal level fold and maybe the chin susceptible to precipitation of pain in the trigger areas. So, the some of the trigger factors, as I said, the thoughts, talking, and teeth, thoughts, talking, teeth, and then trigger areas, that is the nasal level fold and the chin, the pains may usually remit for variable periods. So, the treatment, of course, the carbamazepine pain the first line, so circle carbamazepine pain, failure to respond to the treatment or atypical areas, features that less than 50 years old should prompt referral to the neurology. A small box will be helpful, my dear. A small box will be helpful, that is trisiminal neurology. I am writing here as this box. Trisiminal neurology. Neuralgia. All right. So I'm saying the trigger. Trigger factors are. I said it. Touch, light touch. Just write it down. Talking. 
and tape. This will be helpful, my dear, right? And the management, all right, trigger areas are like the nasolabial fold and also the chin, all right, but the trigger points that you must remember, need the trigger factors. But the treatment, yes, treatment by once again just T fold, just write it down, Tegretol. Tegretol is a brand name of carbamazepine, my dear. Mazepin, all right. Yes. So, I would like to summarize the discussion that already we talked, right? Yes, what is that? Yes, starting with the acoustic neuroma, A for absence, C for corneal reflex. I say it. Acoustic neuroma is nothing but the 578. 578. 57 altogether is a corneal reflex. Next part is the AIC, anterior inferior cerebral artery. Of course, the 578 is once again. But the differences is the both cases only by the body is the pain and temperature is lost here. So the first box and second box, corneal reflex five and seven. Third box, I say normal neurology normal, normal neurology normal. Rini's test normal neurology means nerve deafness is greater than BC. Weber test lateralized to the normal sensory neural hearing loss. Yes, once again. And bilateral, yes, the number four, you can write the bilateral sensory, means the schwannoma or acoustic neuroma, the neurofibromatosis type to the diagnostic feature. And last box, right, that is number five. We talked about the trisiminal neuralgia, that the trigger of the tarts talking tip. Remember, this one. And treatment is done by the Tegretol, the branding name, so T for Tegretol, T for Trigger, T for Trisiminal Neuralgia. I hope that these all discussions will be helpful, my dear. Thank you. Thank you very much.